Your doctor has recommended a semen analysis. You know it's an important part of your fertility evaluation, but you do not want to do it. <laughs> that is totally normal. You're going to want to watch this video to get some tips on how to prepare for your semen analysis. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a fertility doctor helping people build families for over 15 years. And a really important part of fertility evaluation is doing a semen analysis, but I know there is a lot of resistance for my patients for doing this. There are many excuses, but none of them work. It does not matter if you have had a child in the past or caused a pregnancy in the past. It does not matter if you have no symptoms or difficulties trying to conceive. You can have everything feel normal and have no worries. But if, once we look at the specimen under the microscope, we really can find a low sperm count or fertility issue up to 50% of the time when a couple is having difficulty trying to conceive, there is a male factor part of the diagnosis. So no excuses. A semen analysis is really important, but it's okay to be nervous and reluctant to do it. One of my most popular TikToks in the last few months is when I was discussing how vulnerable guys can feel and people get really nervous and reluctant to do a semen analysis. And I was trying to explain that's a really normal feeling. And I was trying to give some tips on how to prepare. And so you're going to learn all about it in detail in this video. If this is your first time finding this channel, welcome. You are going to learn so much about your reproductive health. And if you're coming back, thank you so much. Make sure you leave a comment here to let me know what else you want to learn about. In this video, you are going to learn how common it is to feel awkward and nervous about doing this. Um, and you're going to understand that that is okay. You are going to learn what to expect in the collection and doing a semen analysis, um, how to prepare for it, and how to make sure you get the most accurate result for you. So first of all, here are some common things that patients have talked to me about. I really don't want to do a semen analysis, Dr. Shaheen, because I'm just so embarrassed, like coming to the clinic and doing that. I mean, I know everyone's going to know what I'm doing and um, it's just going to be way too embarrassing. Listen, I get that, but guess what? You are dealing with professionals. People who work at a fertility clinic are used to helping people build families. They are there to help you build a family and you are not the first person that they've seen do a semen analysis. We are professionals and we are there to help. So it's okay to feel nervous about that, but just realize you are in a safe place. Another thing my patients have said is, gosh, I'm really nervous about doing it because I'm nervous that the results are going to be bad. Well, of course, like that's nerve nerve wracking too. More than likely, the sperm count's going to be just fine. But if it's not, that's why we're doing this test so we can figure out ways to help, maybe help improve the sperm counts or, you know, find ways to do treatments with the counts that you have. So it's okay to be nervous. You're not being judged. This isn't like a test that you can study for and that you might fail the exam. This is just an evaluation. It's a part of the fertility checkup and it is really important. One way to decrease your anxiety and your nervousness about doing a, a semen analysis is knowing what to expect that day. So ask about the situation, ask about materials and ask about lubrication. So by situation, what I mean is kind of understand the layout of the clinic. In our clinic, Pacific Northwest Fertility in Seattle, we actually have a separate part of the clinic, its own collection rooms, and it's, you know, really a part of the clinic, but a little bit set off. That might not be the same situation for everyone. So sometimes people show up and they kind of get a little specimen in a bag and they're asked to go in the bathroom down the hall. It just is what it is. Just it's nice for you to know and understand the situation and kind of the layout before you get there. So there's no surprises. By materials, I mean that in our collection rooms, we actually have some materials, but you might be able to bring your own or ask about Wi-Fi whatever you need. And number three, lubricant. So this should be on the directions of the, for the semen analysis when you get it, but if it's not, you should ask about it. A lot of lubrication that you can buy from the drugstore is toxic to sperm. I actually have a whole video on this that really kind of walks you through the different types of lubrication and which ones are okay when you're trying to conceive and which ones are not. So you should get instructions on how to prepare for your semen analysis from the clinic that's doing the testing. Um, and there should be information on lubrication on there, but if there's not, be sure and ask about it. And they might even provide some that they know will not alter the results of the semen analysis. 
So now you have made the appointment. You're getting ready to actually do the semen analysis. Now what? Fun fact, it's just important to realize, lifestyle factors really do affect sperm count and sperm function. So smoking, marijuana, heavy alcohol use, lack of sleep, stress, etc., can all impact health and function of sperm. But you can't clean it up just a couple of days before the semen analysis and expect it to impact your results. You're actually creating and working on sperm for about two or three months before ejaculation. So just a fun fact that you can't, you know, quit all tobacco products two days before your semen analysis and expect it to be um, reflective of what you've done over the last couple of days. It's more reflective of what's been going on with your health and lifestyle over the last two to three months. So getting ready for the appointment, follow directions. So there's going to be information um, from the clinic on how to do the semen analysis and kind of prepare for it. And something that's really important is timing ejaculation before the semen analysis. So it's common and my patients have said, oh, I'm not going to ejaculate for X amount of days beforehand because then I can save it up and I can get a really good count and I'll ace my semen analysis. <laughs> Remember, this is not a test, okay? You cannot flunk a semen analysis. The recommendation is to typically ejaculate between two and seven days before the day of your semen analysis. You don't want to go for more than a week not ejaculating before that semen analysis because the sperm, although you might have a large amount of volume, a lot of the sperm is gonna be dead and non-modal. So it'll look like you have a low motility. And then you don't want to ejaculate the day of your semen analysis or the day before, because then it'll look like there's actually a low count. So the norms of semen analysis are based on a standard of that two to seven day window of ejaculation before the day of the test. So other tips for the day of, don't forget to use the right lubricant. Don't bring your own without asking. And then the last tip is you've got to get all of the specimen. So. My patients have talked to me about, you know, oh my gosh, I just didn't realize I just didn't get it all into the cup. Hey, that's okay. If that happens, tell the lab, because if we don't know that, then we're going to assume that there is an abnormally low count. And if that happens to you, you are not the first person. It's just good for us to have that information. And then based on the results, your doctor may say, you know what, actually we've got enough information here. We don't need to repeat it. But if they have an abnormal result, you don't want them to assume that you actually really have a low count if you lost some of the specimen when you were trying to collect. You wanna be honest because then they can say, okay, well, Let's figure this out. If we aren't sure, let's repeat the test and not just assume that there's a low count, okay? So it's okay to be nervous about that. Don't be, just be honest. And remember, you're dealing with professionals and you are not the first person that missed part of it in that cup. If that happens to you, it's okay. Just be honest. And what if you get there on that day and it is just not happening? Listen, you are not the first person that this happens to. It is you know, not your fault. And you can just say, you know what, this is just not the right day for me. Maybe reset and try again, or talk to your clinic about options. Sometimes people do collect at home. The thing about collecting at home is you really should ask for the right specimen cup to use, and you should really get strict directions on, you know, again, any lubricant, and you should really get the specimen to the lab within an hour. The longer that the sperm sits in the seminal fluid, um, more and more of it um, actually dies off, and so the results will be skewed and won't be very accurate if you cannot get the specimen to the lab within an hour of collection. Okay, so let's recap. Semen analysis is a very important part of the fertility evaluation. There are no excuses to get out of it, um, but it is absolutely okay to be nervous, to decrease your anxiety, prepare and learn and ask questions, learn about the situation, ask about materials, make sure you're using the right lubrication, try to use none if at all possible, follow directions um, as far as not ejaculating like really close to your appointment time, but within a week of the date and then follow dire the directions there as far as lubricant or not and which one and then try to get it all in the cup but if you don't be honest and if you just can't do it that day it is okay you're 
not the only person that that happens to you and talk to your clinic about options, maybe just trying again or see what options are available to you. I hope this video was helpful to you. I have so much educational information here on YouTube. Please check out my other videos. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Subscribe to this channel and stick around for more learning.